So this is 7.27 from Taylor's Mechanics book. And we have this kind of double pulley system where one of the lines of the pulley goes to just another pulley itself. So this is where we're going to use Lagrange mechanics in a way that you really couldn't do with Newtonian mechanics because it starts to get kind of complicated. So the question itself says, well, that's just the setup there, but it wants us to set up the Lagrangian and use the Lagrange equation to find the acceleration of mass 4m when it is released. So that's really what we're looking for here. Um, so to start, we basically have three masses we need to consider. The first one is given a position x1, which we'll just call x1, and the time derivative of that to get our velocity. Now for the second one, it's a little bit more complicated because we need to find its position. So if we're calling this x1, which I was, and we want, let's say the third one here, I'll do that in green, I suppose. Say this is x2. Then this length right here, this length here is going to be L1, which is the length of the wire, minus x1. Since x1 is, this is x1. So that's L1 minus x1. All my pencils are falling over. Let me move that. I will fix that in a second here. Not sure what its problem is. Um, so anyways, that we can call, for example, x2. And then right here, this length will be L2 minus X2 because L2 is, well, this is X2. And the whole thing, this whole loop is L2. So if you do L2 minus X2, you'll be left with just that. So, if we want the position of mass three, we want to add, we want to take, let me make this a little bit bigger. We want this portion plus x2. So x2 L1 minus x1 plus x2. So we're taking that chunk, L1 minus x1, and we're adding an x2 to it. And we're going to take the derivative as well. L is just a constant. That's the length. So we'll get minus x1 dot plus x2 dot. L is just the length of the rope, and that's not changing. That's a constant. So its derivative is 0. And then for, so this, just so we know, is for 4m. This one is for 3m. And then one just for m. We'll call x3. Now, what is x3? Well, x3 is the entire length here. So I'll do that in this color. x3 is this whole length, which maybe you can see as being this plus this. So x3 is L1 plus x1 plus, I'm sorry, minus x1 plus L2 minus x2. And we can find the velocity by taking the derivative. And it's very similar that way. So the diagram is a little weird. Um, hopefully it makes sense, but you have to kind of consider a few things. And from there you can get the position, and then from the position you can get the velocity. Now with the velocity, just like with any Lagrangian problem, we can now find our kinetic energy, T. So again, we want the kinetic energy of the system. So this is going to be 1 half. The first mass is 4m times x1 dot squared plus the second one, so 1 half 3m 
And then we'll take our second one for the velocity, minus x1 dot plus x2 dot squared plus, then we're gonna have 1 half m. And I'm just gonna go ahead and factor out the negative x1 dot plus x2 dot uh, squared. So now we can try to simplify this a little bit. This is obviously going to get us just 2m x1 dot squared plus 3 over 2m. I'm going to go ahead and expand this part. So that will give us x1 dot squared plus x2 dot squared minus 2x1 dot x2 dot. You can expand that if you don't believe me, but I'm just going to kind of move through it really fast. And I'm also going to expand this next one. So that will get you, I'll do it in this color, x1 dot squared plus x2 dot squared plus 2x1 dot x2 dot. So I just expanded the squares there. Now I'm going to go ahead and distribute and combine like terms afterwards. So, so far just a lot of algebra when we're dealing with the kinetic energy, which is sometimes the hardest part. So now I'm going to distribute the 3 half m. And then I'm going to distribute the other one half m. I distributed three half m, and now I'm distributing the one half m. So that's all that I was doing. Let's zoom out here. Let's combine like terms. So I'm just going to say, well, I have this guy and this guy and this guy that are all like terms. So let's see, 3 halves plus 1 half is 4 halves. So that's 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. So that gives us 4mx1 dot squared. Now let's see, we have this, oops, and this are the same terms. Three, that's four halves, so that's going to be two. So plus two m x dot two squared. And then we have uh, this guy and this guy, which is minus two m x one dot x two dot. And that's your kinetic energy. And now we need the potential energy of each system. So the potential energy of the first block will be minus mgh. So I'll say minus 4mg x1. So essentially what we're doing is we're just plugging in its position. So for the next one, it will be minus 3mg. And we look at their position. And it's L minus x1 plus x2. I should call this L1 because they could be different. L1 minus X1 plus X2 minus Mg. And then for the third block, you know, this is our position. These were all our positions, so I can plug that in. So that's L1 minus X1 plus L2 minus X2. Now I'm going to distribute everything. So just again, more algebra. We'll get minus 3mgl1 plus 3mgx1 minus 3mgx2 minus mgl1 plus mgx1 minus mgl2 plus mg x2 so i distributed 
And now I'm going to try to pick up like terms again. So let's see, what do we have? Well, here's one, same term. This has the same term. And this has the same term. So that's four plus three plus one. So that's going to be zero. So these actually end up, maybe I should do them in red. This will cancel with this plus, plus this. Okay, so let's see. We have this and this. So that's going to be minus 4 mgl1. And then we're going to have... Here's one with x2, here's one with x2, so that is minus 2, mgx2, and then we have this guy just kind of hanging out, we'll include that. Perfect. So we have our potential energy pretty well simplified along with our kinetic energy, and now we can find our Lagrangian which is just kinetic minus potential. So kinetic is 4m x1 dot squared plus 2m x2 dot squared minus 2m x1 dot times x2 dot. So this is minus, so actually this will be plus 4m g l1 plus 2m g x2 plus and G L2. Um, so there, I don't think there's much we can really combine here, so we'll just get right into the Euler Lagrangian. So the Euler Lagrangian, we'll do it for just uh, X1, I guess, to start, since that's what we're looking for. DL by DX1 is D by DT, parcel of our Lagrangian with respect to X dot. So if we take the derivative of L, which we just found with respect to x1, well, it's not dependent on x1 as I'm looking at it. I don't see x1. That looks like spam. <laughs> I'll take that down later. So then this term is 0 equals d by dt. All right, so we're going to have to do x dot. Now, there is x dot, x1 dot here. This should be a 1. So for example, here, we would do a power rule. And that turns into a m x dot 1. And then over here, minus 2 m x dot 2. So let's see, that's 0 equals, I'm going to factor out a 2 m. And then taking its derivative, I get 4 x1 dot minus x2 dot. Or if I just divide over, 4, x1, oh, these should be double dot. Got to take the time derivative. So 4, x1, double dot equals x2, double dot. Which tells us that x1 dot, since that's what we're interesting in, is equal to 1 fourth x2, double dot. So what is x double dot? Well, we have to find out. And the good thing is we can use the Lagrangian for x2 to solve this. So same exact equation. We're just replacing x1 with x2. So there is an x2 here. That's here. So when I take its derivative, I get just 2mg equal to d by dt. And then I'm going to need to take the derivative of, we'll do it in green, this guy, uh, yeah, that guy, and this guy again. So I get 4mx dot 2 minus 2mx1 dot. So that's 2mg equals... Again, I'm gonna factor out a 2m and then take the time derivative. So I get 2x double dot squared 
minus x1 double dot. Or I can divide these. So all I'm doing is taking time derivatives. Hopefully you guys are okay with that. g is equal to 2x2 two double dot minus x1 double dot. And you can kind of see, I think, pretty clearly now, we have a system of equations, two unknowns, two equations, so it's perfect. I'm going to solve for x2 here, and I see that's going to be g plus x1 double dot over 2. So now I can take this and plug it into here to solve for the acceleration of the block that we're interested in. So x1 double dot is 1 fourth times g plus x1 double dot over 2. Or if I just distribute that, that's going to be g plus x1 double dot over 8. If I multiply over, 8x1 double dot is equal to g plus x1 double dot, subtracting x1 double dot over, I get 7x1 double dot equals 0, zero. I'm sorry, g, not 0, and if I divide over, 1 over 7g is equal to x1 double dot. I might have said things wrong, but what I write down is what I actually mean most of the time. So that's how you apply these problems. This one was a little trickier because you've probably never seen a pulley system before like this at least in physics one, or uh, if you did, it's a lot more complicated to solve with Newtonian mechanics. So this was just using Lagrangian in a more difficult manner. It required more algebra. It required solving a system of equations using Euler-Lagrangian for x1 and x2, but I think it was a good problem to